From California to New York, at least half a dozen states are coordinating and committing to protecting reproductive freedom, environmental regu regulations, immigrant rights, and the LGBTQ community. In Massachusetts, just hours after Trump's win, State Attorney General Andrea Campbell announced that her office has been working ahead to prepare for a second Trump term. Quote, where someone violates the law or the protections of our residents or the values we hold dear, we will fight and we will do it in collaboration with AGs across the country, end quote. Under Trump's first term, the Massachusetts Attorney General's office served, uh, sued the Trump administration nearly 100 times and was often a leader or collaborator in multi-state suits. Meanwhile, California officials have similarly spent months preparing to Trump-proof itself, drafting legal briefs to preemptively block Trump, a potential Trump policies that could affect a host of rights. The Attorney General, Rob Bonta, announced on Thursday, quote, you can be sure that as California Attorney General, if Trump attacks your rights, I'll be there. If Trump comes after your freedoms, I'll be there. If Trump jeopardizes your safety and your well-being, I'll be there. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, after losing the Democratic vice presidential uh, election, also vowed to protect Minnesota citizens, warning on Friday, quote, the moment they try to bring a hateful agenda into this state, I'm ready to stand up and fight for the way we do things here. Minnesota always has and always will be there to bring shelter from the storm, end quote. Walls criticized abortion rights, climate action, uh, gun safety, and labor rights. Uh, I'm sorry, he cited those things as areas that he intends to defend. Meanwhile, the Connecticut Attorney General William Tong said on Thursday that his office will protect immigrant families from separation under Trump's mass deportation plan. And in New York, Governor Kathy Hochul and Attorney General Letitia James held a joint press conference to announce their new initiative to protect New Yorkers' rights under a plan called the Empire State Freedom Initiative. The measure aims to protect reproductive rights, civil rights, immigrants, environmental standards, and more against potential abuses of power. On Thursday, James told reporters, quote, we will continue to stand in the tall in the face of injustice, revenge, or retribution. We will continue to protect our most vulnerable and marginalized amongst us. We are prepared, my friends, to fight back. While many are still reeling from Tuesday's election, from Tuesday's, uh, from Tuesday's loss, these state leaders are wasting no time in steering the resistance in this dark new chapter for America. Their actions could become a crucial check on Trump's authoritarian ambitions. But for now, this nationwide legal front offers a measure of assurance for a generation of Americans who are confronting one of the greatest challenges that our country's democratic foundations has ever faced. More on this, I'm joined by the Connecticut Attorney General William Tong and the Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays. Good morning to both of you. Thank you both for uh, being here. You and I were talking about this, and you and I have talked about this in the past. Uh, the fact is, uh, like the Secretary of State, who we've heard so much from in the last few, four years, but we never talked to before, uh, Attorney General do this. You look at all of these laws, these things that we sometimes see as Supreme Court cases, as federal cases, you're often involved in anyway. So every time something big is happening in this country that affects anybody in your state, your office is on it looking at the ways that affect people in your state and, and determining whether you have standing and a role to play. Yeah, we're in these fights every single day. Yeah. We built a firewall in Trump 1.0. That firewall uh, has never come down. And, and we were in Dobbs. It didn't go the right way, but we were, were in the fight to preserve the Affordable Care Act, in the DACA fight. We're there every single day protecting the people of our states and the people of this country. Uh, Attorney General Mays, nice to see you again, by the way. Um, talk to me about ways in which you do this, because we're dealing with tangible issues here, reproductive rights, civil rights, voting rights, environmental protections. What are the specific things that you can do in the face of a, an administration that is going to do something that at least half of Americans think um, are, are dangerous and, and affect them directly? Yeah, hi, Ali. It's great to be with you again. Um, what can we do? We, we, we do uh, this by planning for it. And I, th I want everyone to know that the state AGs, Democratic AGs, have been planning uh, for this possibility for many months now. You know, uh, Project 2025 has been out there for more than a year. Obviously, we did not want this to come to pass, but that document, which they have telegraphed for the whole country, um, is chock full of unconstitutional provisions. 
Um, and so we are planning for it. As uh, my colleague, uh, A.G. Tong, just said, we stand ready to file the lawsuits that will be necessary to stop the unconstitutional and, frankly, illegal provisions that are in Project 2025. One of them, just to, to name one, would be the reinstatement uh, or the implementation of the Comstock mm -hmm. Act, which would essentially enact a, a nationwide abortion ban, even though states like mine just voted to ensconce abortion rights in our Constitution. Um, they also uh, have said they want to surveil women who are seeking reproductive care or who are traveling interstate for reproductive care. That, of course, is unacceptable to the vast majority of women and Americans. So we stand ready to file those lawsuits that A.G. Tong was talking about that they had to file in 2017, 2018. Um, they filed more than 100 lawsuits, and we had a, an 80 percent success rate. Edgy hey, Tong, I, you are all people. You are the chief law enforcement officers in your in your state. You you are familiar with this. You get threats. All sorts of things happen. I was a little shocked uh, by Mike Davis, uh, a Trump lawyer who is reportedly being considered for the position of attorney general. Uh, he he named one of his first targets, someone you have worked with very closely, New York's attorney general, Tish James. Um, I'm going to read this, uh, and I've had many, I've thought about reading this many times, but I'm going to read this to my audience. Uh, quote, let me just say this to Big Tish James, the New York Attorney General. I dare you. I dare you to try to continue your lawfare against President Trump in his second term, because listen here, sweetheart, we're not messing around this time, and we will put your fat ass in prison for conspiracy against rights, and I promise you that. And I, I apologize to my, my viewers for having to read that, but, yeah. but it's actually important. I, I dare him to say that to her face. Yeah. There's nobody touch, tougher than Tish James. Yeah. I've served with her for six years, and it's despicable. It's disgusting. It puts her at risk. But Tish is one of our leaders, not just in, in, in New York or in our region, but in this country. We look to Tish. She is one of the key parts of this firewall, and she's going to be tougher than ever. And Chris Mays, you, I mean, you're used to these legal fights, but this is a, a different flavor altogether. Right. And by the way, you face this in Arizona with people who are not engaging in sort of normal level legal or political fights, but go to these remarkable extremes. They're saying this stuff. And part of the effort in authoritarian governments is to try and make people fear so that they obey in advance. And that is the one thing our readers, our, our viewers need to know that you, Chris Mays, you, uh, uh, William Tong, will not do that. No, we won't do that. We won't be cowed. We won't be intimidated. And, you know, we, we never have. And, and, you know, this is a time for patriots to stand up for our Constitution, for us to remember that millions of Americans fought and sacrificed and died for our Constitution. Um, and, you know, just because one, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe that individual uh, would say those disgusting things about the top law enforcement officer of the state of New York. Um, just because they say those things doesn't mean that we're going to stand down. Ali, as you know, I have a fake electors case in Arizona. Yes. I have no intention of bringing that case up. I have no intention of dropping that case. A grand jury in the state of Arizona decided that these individuals who engaged in an attempt to overthrow our democracy in 2020 should be held accountable. So we won't be cowed, we won't be intimidated, and patriots across the country must stand up for our constitution, for what is lawful, and we will do that. And what is where we can, we will obviously, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was gonna say, your point there, where it's lawful, and, I, and that's the point, right? If this person, and I hope if this person shows up uh, for a Senate hearing to get confirmed for attorney general, this gets brought up, that you can't just threaten people for wanting to pursue what they do. Uh, William, you, 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 you do take the law into account when you challenge a case. If, if you don't have standing, if you don't have a legal argument, you won't do it. Of course, that's what the rule of law means. And, and I should also say that um, following Tish's lead and Chris's lead and together as state attorneys general, we're not just going to take it anymore. We're not going to be on defense like we were in Dobbs. We're on offense. You're the, the Mifepristone, the attempted right. Mifepristone ban. That is nothing if not an attempt to enact a nationwide ban on abortion. 
right? And we went on offense. We went into federal court. We filed our own lawsuit to protect access to mifepristone. So Democratic AGs are going on offense. And that's something Chris Mays, people, women are asking. You talked about surveillance. Um, there are women who are really scared about this because there are a lot of women who use apps um, in, in part of their efforts to, to reproduce and understand when, they're, when they can get pregnant. There are a lot of women who, who use a lot of technology. There are a lot of women who depend on mifepristone. There are a lot of women who depend on uh, abortion pills, I'm sorry, contraceptive pills by mail that the Comstock Act and some Republicans have said they will target as well. There are people who have real fears about what should they be doing. Should they be stockpiling? Should they be finding providers in Mexico or Canada? These are real issues to people. These are real issues to people, um, and they're real issues for, for states, uh, and, and these are all things uh, and reasons that we will stand up for the rule of law, for the states' rights, frankly, right? The rights of states to protect reproductive rights. Um, and yes, women are afraid. I can't tell you how many women have come up to me and hugged me or who have been in tears about this and who are fearful. You know, we also have, uh, you know, DACA recipients, dreamers who are afraid. I'll tell you, we are not going to uh, put up with any attempts to undermine our dreamers in this country and, and deport dreamers or eliminate DACA. Um, these are the kinds of lines in the sand yep. that I think that we have to draw going forward. And you, of course, had a lot of experience with that in Arizona, where the federal government has tried to enforce or try to use local and state authorities to enforce their immigration uh, desires. And that hasn't uh, that hasn't worked. Thanks to both of you. We appreciate it. Attorney General William Tong of Connecticut and Attorney General Chris Mays of Arizona.